So I've had the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II for about a month now, and I have my thoughts and opinions on it as far as using it, albeit only in the studio. So this is going to be a overall thoughts, I would say, of the camera using it in a studio environment. I haven't really gone outside or had the opportunity to vlog with it or really do anything um, with that kind of work. So I do apologize. I know some people are going to dislike the video and comment down below, like how you're going to be able to do this if you never used it in this and that scenario and all that stuff. This is just from a content creator who picked this tool up to be able to do their job and that kind of instance as far as using it. That being said, I did use the time lapse and the only thing I haven't really done is use the cine vlog mode yet because I, again, and I feel like that's more for people who are going to go out and about who would potentially use the cine vlog mode as well as using cine vlog with the time lapse because you can do that on the camera. But I'm going to give my thoughts and opinions, like I said, of using this camera, who I think it's for and everything like that and any gripes that I have with the camera. So if you're interested in that, let's dive right in it. Before I do that, though, I do want to go ahead and say I'm going to have an accessories a little list or wherever in the description that's on Amazon is to link to the Amazon store page that I have. And that's obviously affiliate links. It helps out the channel. If you purchase anything, I'll have stuff in there like uh, the fan to cool off the camera, camera cages and just other stuff or wherever for the Mark 1, Mark 2 and just you can find it all there if you need to. And lastly, if you do find this video informative or helpful in any way, shape or form, then you can show me by leaving a comment or a like down below. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it with the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. I don't have a problem with the physical body other than you needing to have the fan because the Sony ZV line is known and notorious for overheating. I've never had this camera overheat because I have so many of these little fans or whatever for all my cameras for different angles and stuff like that. And I just primarily use them. So I never have to worry about, you know, the camera, I would say overheating or anything like that. It is a really good camera. Like I said, um, as long as you have it, you know, hooked up or whatever to the camera, never had a problem with the overheating or anything like that. And my office gets to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I just recently got a portable AC unit because of the heat waves and the position of my house and the position of the sun. It beams into this room or wherever, even with, you know, taking measures to alleviate that kind of thing. The room still gets hot. I got studio lighting. I have, you know, PC, all that stuff going. So, you know, having these fans come in clutch and there's no reason to do an overheating test and wondering about it because it's like a $40 fan. So definitely, definitely pick it up if you're going to want to get this camera. I like the fact that we have the built-in time lapse. I like the fact that, you know, we have the built-in cine vlog, even though I haven't used them in tandem with each other or just using the cine vlog. But I do think that's more primarily for people who are going to go out and about and like, videotape what's going on like kind of like a little montage segment or something like that some cinematic b-roll whatever people want to call it nowadays i do think having that wherever is really good for your workflow because you don't have to go in editing in post or wherever to do all that stuff because i noticed at least with the mark one and the sony zv one mark one when i was looking at videos on how to do time lapses because i wanted to get into vlogging and learn how to do that stuff it was it was cumbersome learning camera settings how to switch it back after you switch those camera settings and going in and learning how to put them and stitch them together wherever and editing and all that stuff and it's like man i just want the camera to do it for me and then the alpha 6700 was announced but i saw the price tag and i was like that camera is just not for me even if it has ibis and it has you know better rolling shutter and it has you know the viewfinder and it does it in post the ai chip all that stuff and it's like primarily most of those things or wherever as far as the ai chip could be done in cap cut you know what i'm saying an eight dollar editing program that can track your hands your face your body all that stuff so that's a non-factor for most content creators out there because again somehow their editing program does it you know what I mean? And a lot of people who use these AI tracking stuff like on Osmo Pocket 3 or the Alpha 6700, when you watch four year, uh, four months or to a year down the road kind of reviews that people put out, they say that they don't really use that feature at all as much as they thought they would. So that doesn't justify paying $400 more for the Alpha 6700 over the Mark II. Well, it has the EVF, but like I said earlier, most people are not going to even use EVF because they're gonna be video centric content creators. Okay, but it has IBIS. 
nine times out of 10, people are going to sit their camera down on a tripod like I'm doing now, indoors or out. They're going to put on a park bench. They're going to put on a park table. You know, they're going to go inside a, a restaurant, a coffee shop or whatever, and put it on the table. You know what I'm saying? Or put it on top of the car. They might hold it for, you know, five minutes at most recording a little segment, but they're not walking around all day holding it or wherever, every single instance or wherever. Primarily most I would say vloggers. And if somebody is doing something like this, then nine times out of 10, they got the Osmo Pocket or they got a uh, action camera or something like that. They might still have an actual camera like this for when they're at home or something like that. But when they're going in public and they know they're going to be holding a camera like this for long periods of time, they're going, like I, said, like I said, with an action camera or the Osmo Pocket. They're not going to be doing this. For one, it's less intrusive, you know what I'm saying, as far as public uh, perception of, you know, walking around doing something like this. So again, there's a lot of more pros to getting something like that than, you know, doing something like this. So again, that still doesn't justify a $400 price increase just for the feature sets on the Alpha 6700, unless, like I said, you're an actual photographer who's doing some video work. That's the only reason why you should get the Alpha 6700 over the Mark II, like I previously stated. So what are my gripes about the camera? Like I mentioned previously, the overheating thing or wherever. Again, I've never had this camera overheat. I never had the symbol pop up because I already had f extra Ulanzi fans or wherever to go in back to the camera. You don't have to get the Ulanzi one. There's other ones out there. You could just search up camera fan or wherever on Amazon and you'll find a plethora pop up. When it comes to USB streaming, I know some people have mentioned it before. The USB streaming, when you hook up the right USB cable and you get the option of 4K USB streaming, you cannot use the color picture profiles. So for me, that's not a problem because I use HDMI anyways, because I paid a thousand dollars for these, for these cameras and like and accessories and all that stuff. Why am I just going to use it as a USB webcam? Like that just doesn't make any sense to me. Like I said, even if you got the 4K resolution, you don't get access to the color picture profiles, which this camera is a 10 pit and it's supposed to allow you to do a lot more as a content creator. So why are you limiting yourself? Why are you limiting your your creativity? You know what I'm saying? At that point, you should just get the Mark One, even though the Mark One's USB Type C streaming capability is only like 720p. You can still get like a $10 capture card and and stream and use your camera wherever in at least 1080p 60. You, you know what I mean? And even if it's 1080p 60, everybody wants this 4K. And like I said in a previous video, not everybody who's watching your content is watching in 4K. Majority of people on this planet don't have access to the capability of watching content in 4K anyways. So what's the point of you having a 4K streaming you know, thing or wherever, when you can get, you know, the OnSpot Meet 4K, uh, I think two, wherever version two, that just dropped this like 120 something dollars. You know what I'm saying? And it's super small. Yes, it still has that webcam -y look, but it's 4K. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Why spend a thousand dollars? You see what I'm saying? And even if you were saying, well, I'm using the camera for content creation like this or going out and vlogging, all that stuff. Again, why sit there and use a USB cable because you can't use color picture profiles. This camera is meant for people who have already had a camera, who've had the Mark one or maybe one of the point and shoot of the ZV line or some other camera. And they're wanting to learn a little bit more about color grading because again, 10 bit over eight bit, so many different color picture profiles, access to really good S log three, all that stuff. What's the point of getting this camera and you're shooting in intelligent auto mode or no color picture profile that, that, doesn't make any sense on any logical scale. All right, so wrap up the video about the Sony ZV E10 Mark II. I'm going to go ahead and give my closing thoughts, however, because the video already too long. But this camera, in my personal opinion, is not for people who are going to have a setup like mine, where I have a static angle and I also have a static overhead shot, you know, on a rig and everything like that. This is not going to be for those types of people. You can get by still with, the, in my personal opinion, the Sony ZV E10 Mark I. Yes, it's 8 bit. Yes, it doesn't have the feature set of the Mark II. And I think that's where a lot of people are saying, like, there's no reason to upgrade because 
you know, it doesn't have the features of other cameras that are more expensive. But in my personal opinion, this camera is meant to be a go out and about busy bee. You're doing a whole bunch of time lapses. You're doing a whole bunch of cine vlog, you know, shooting and stuff like that. You're not just having this camera be a static angle sitting on a tripod in your office or attached to a pole on a desk or wherever, like I'm doing or wherever with these two cameras to be able to create content, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of people will use a camera like this in that scenario where they just walk into their studio, they turn on their PC, they turn on the camera, they record and just go like I do. But again, if you if I wanted to take a time lapse or use a cine vlog or just take this camera with me, if I'm going on a trip or something like that, I would have to detach all the cables from the film monitor to the camera, the cables for the microphones, the dummy battery, like all that stuff, deattach it, even if I have a quick release plate on it and then go. And then when I come back, I have to reassemble all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And it's like when I could just grab this camera off the shelf, put it in my camera bag and go. If I wanted to record a time lapse in my studio, I can just grab the camera off the shelf, put it on a tripod and record and be perfectly fine. Maybe switch out the battery or maybe even just use the dummy battery and that's it. You see what I'm saying? That's a lot easier because this camera is meant to do that. It's meant to be pushed and used in that type of scenario where you are using the time lapse a lot. You are using the cine vlog a lot. Even if you're recording, you know, S-Log3, HLG3 videos and stuff like that, it's not meant, in my personal opinion, to be a locked off static angle where you have all this stuff or wherever attached and you just always want a camera ready to go and record. Because again, if you're that type of content creator who is going out and being, I would say, uh, active as a cam as a person who's using a camera, you're not going to want to have this locked off. Because like I said, if depending on how frequent you're recording videos or whatever, after a while, you can take it from me as far as like me having to constantly recently do a whole bunch of wireless microphone testing or whatever, lavalier system testing. I had to disassemble this whole setup or wherever for the Mark One and go outside and record videos on separate occasions or wherever and then come back and then hook everything back up, take out the SD card, go in and edit and stuff like that. Whereas if I had the, ca I didn't have this camera at the time, but if I had this camera, then I could just grab it off the shelf, plug the wireless microphone in it and record outside. You see what I'm saying? It wouldn't have been so much to do. And it might seem minute, it might seem small, but I'm telling you right now, having to do that frequently, it's after a while, it's going to make sense of what I'm saying. Just just take my word for it. it. It really is. So what I would suggest, because a lot of people I've seen have said, sell your other camera to get this camera whatever other camera it is, entry level, wherever, and you want a camera like this and because of the price point and because of the cine vlog and the time lapse and all that stuff, then, you know, go ahead and pick up this camera by selling your other cameras. What I would suggest is saving up for half of the camera. And if you can go through Sony's website and do the firm thing or wherever, because that's what I did. I paid half of the camera and then I'm paying monthly payments, wherever through a firm, super low monthly payments, and I'm paying off the camera. You see what I'm saying? And that way I can keep the Mark one for the static angle, never have to move it, never have to worry about anything. Don't have to take the SD card out. And it, it just lives there and it's always ready to go no matter what, unless there's like a tornado or something like that. And I have to take my expensive gear with me. Like I said, you're not going to want to do that with the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. There's videos that I've recorded with this camera in the same setup and scenario with the Mark One. And then when I wanted to take it down for a time lapse because I was streaming or something like that and I wanted to use the feature, check it out and all that stuff, I had to take down everything. And then after I was done recording that stuff and took the SD card out, I had to put it all back. I had to put it back up and put all of it back. In. Like it's not it's not fluid. You know what I'm saying? It's not making my job as a content creator smooth. And that's what these tools are supposed to do. And that's what this camera does as far as the other aspects. But like I said, being locked off, being your static camera, I just wouldn't suggest using this camera in that scenario. You know what I'm saying? I would use the Mark one or what other camera that you're using, maybe an older Alpha 60 something uh, camera or wherever. I would still use it as a static. It would be hard for me to suggest using this as your locked off static shot or wherever that's always ready to record because then it would be a gross misuse of your funds because you want to be taking advantage of the time lapse and the cine vlog even if you have access to 10-bit s-log all that stuff 
it's still like that's not what this camera is meant to do it's meant to be used creatively and locking it off in a static angle like this just to record a video and that's all you're doing i would suggest the mark one you know what i'm saying i even though it has the bigger the better sensor it has the 10 bit you know it has you know the time lapse and single vlog, all that stuff or wherever it's a better performer on paper but you have to really think about what type of content you're going to be doing you know what i'm saying and like i said if you're just going to lock it off to a tripod and it's just going to constantly sit in your office and you're just going to record videos like i'm doing like talking head videos or wherever and you're never really going to move the camera and be mobile and take it into a camera bag maybe every so often and all that stuff then the mark one is still going to be serviceable at least in my personal opinion um i know other people are going to hate that they're going to say no whatever it, it's fine but like i said use this camera use this tool the way it was meant to be used don't lock it off into a tripod in your office you know what i'm saying use it in a way that makes sense take this thing out and about you know vlog with it shoot with it outside use it for time lapses inside don't just lock this off in a static angle for a top down or a talking head or wherever and just be like well i'm never detaching the camera and unplugging all the cables and doing all that stuff like that's not what this camera in my personal opinion was meant for hopefully that was informational or helpful to somebody out there if it was you can show that appreciation by leaving a like or a comment down below if you're new to the channel and you want to see some more videos from me then consider subscribing or even joining the membership it helps out here on the channel the members should be popping up on screen y'all take care have a squeetastic day if you're interested in any of the accessories like i said before you can find them in that amazon storefront link down in the description it helps out the channel as well and uh catch you guys in the next one y'all take care have a squid day god bless you and yours and deuces everybody much love